All right, welcome back. Well, this is going to be the first of three short videos that are going to hopefully um, give a very basic introduction into the dynamics of the polarized membrane and how we establish membrane polarity, how we depolarize and then repolarize those membranes. So first we want to start with establishing membrane polarity. So I want to introduce you to my little friend this is going to be the sodium potassium ATPase pump. Okay, so I'm going to draw this just kind of very stylized. It's just kind of drawing the pump in here. Okay, um, so there's the first half of it, and then we'll have another half over here. Okay, this is just to kind of give you an idea of what's going on here. Okay, okay, all right, super. All right, so here's our pump, and the way this thing's going to work is um, it's going to use ATP and it's going to transport three molecules of sodium out of the cell. So it's going to take sodium and it's going to actually take three of them and it's going to move them out of the cell. At the same time, or concomitantly, um, it's going to take a couple of potassiums and it's going to pump them into the cell. So we end up with a situation, um, here let me pick a new color, uh, we'll do this, okay. Uh, we're going to end up with a situation where we have a whole lot of sodium on the outside of the cell, okay. So, lot, so we're generating a concentration gradient where sodium is very rich on the outside of the cell and potassium is rich on the inside of the cell. Now I should take a minute to say that I'm gonna kind of oversimplify this just a hair. I want these videos to be appropriate for introductory level anatomy and physiology students. I don't want these to be um, for cell biology students say. Um, so I, I'm really kind of boiling it down to the the bare bones here. So if, if this is a little oversimplified from what you need, then I'm sorry, um, but I'm, I'm making it for, for intro AMP. All right, so here's the situation. We have lots of sodium out here, lots of potassium here, and there's some other stuff going on. I want you to notice that every time the pump churns, right, we send three sodiums out, and we only bring two potassiums in. So we're we're further increasing the difference between positive and negatives on either side of this membrane. So on the outside of the membrane, we have lots of sodium, and on the inside of the membrane, we have lots of potassium, and we have a lot more sodium, we have more sodium going out than potassium coming in. We also have uh, differences in other ions resulting in a net positive charge on the outside of the cell membrane. So on the exterior surface, we have a net positive charge and a net negative charge inside the cell. And if we were to take a little voltmeter and stick it in here, we would see that the interior of the cell would read at about minus 70 millivolts. Okay, now, again, I'm not gonna talk about leak channels or uh, the other ions that are contributing to this. Suffice it to say there are other factors that are going to um, stabilize the action of this pump to the level of minus 70 millivolts. So the inside of the cell is gonna be sitting at minus 70. Okay, so that's kind of it for establishing what we call the resting membrane potential or this electrical charge um, differential that occurs across the cell. So in the next video, we're going to talk about how excitable cells become excitable by manipulating these concentrations of ions.